Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. Last week I did a video on the Unify Network Controller 7.1.61 and this was a release candidate and now it has been moved to official. In this video, we're gonna go over some of the improvements that I really like. I'm not gonna read any of the release notes. If you do wanna see that, I will put it in the description below. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You'd find me on Twitter at MacTelecomN. And if you'd like to support the channel, the best way to do that is to use my Ubiquity affiliate link which is in the description below. So in this video, I'm gonna be switching back and forth between my UDR and my UDM SE because there's some features that are only fully released on the UDR. And that first feature is Teleport VPN. So this is a zero config VPN that has a back end of WireGuard. It uses the Wi-Fi Man app on your Android and iOS phone, and it's currently not available for Windows or Mac OS, but they are coming out with the Mac OS app. If you do have a UDR and you want to see how this works, I do have a full video and that will be linked below. The next big addition was the switch port insights and the bulk editing. So in previous versions on the new UI, we weren't able to do bulk editing, but we can now. So if we click my USW Enterprise 24, and then go to ports, we could see port insight. And this dashboard looks really cool. We could see device fingerprints up top of what's connected to the ports. And we could see things like the PoE status, the profiles, the speed activity, and the transmit rates. But another thing that we could do within the port insights is do the bulk port editing. So if we wanna edit port 16 to 19, all we need to do is click on all four of the ports. Now we can see here that since there are multiple ports with varying configurations, 16's port settings have been designated as the default. Once confirmed, all selected ports will be reconfigured to match the port. So if you're selecting four ports like this and you just want to put them into the same VLAN, all we would do is go to the port profile and then select the VLAN that we want them to be in. You could also do things like PoE and speed negotiations. But one thing you can't do when they're all selected under the operation, you can see that it says switching and it's grayed out. We can't hit that drop down to put it into mirroring or aggregate. So if we wanna aggregate all four of these ports together, we need to just select one of the ports. So we have port 16, go down to the operation mode and put it on aggregate and then it says aggregate ports. So we're gonna select the range of ports that we want to be a part of this lag group. And we're going to go up to port 19 and then we'll press apply changes. So now on ports 16 to 19, we could see this aggregate icon. So we know that these ports are in aggregate together. The next major change, and in my opinion, should have been done a long time ago, is with the UDM Pro or the UDM SE, we could now make the SFP Plus that was always the WAN 2 port into a LAN port. And I'll show you how to do that. We're going to go over to ports. We're going to scroll down to the bottom where we see WAN ports. And we can see currently that port 10 is SFP plus WAN 2. We're going to configure the interfaces. And now you can see all the ports. We have port 8, port 9, which is the 2.5 gigabit Ethernet interface. We have port 10, and then we have port 11. Port 11 is still always just going to be our LAN port, and that's going to be our 10 gigabit LAN. But on port 9, which is our WAN 1, we could also change that to be a LAN port. So port 10, our SFP plus, I'm going to change that to LAN and then press apply. Now that port 10 is a LAN port instead of a WAN port, one thing we still can't do, we can't aggregate these two ports together if it was going down to a switch. So if we go over to port insights and then we click on port 10, you'd see we can't change the switching operation, which is a bit of a letdown, but we could always connect it to another switch and one of the ports would be in spanning tree protocol or we could connect it to one of our other switches. So I'm really glad they added that feature to allow us to choose if it's a LAN or a WAN. Now let's take a look at our switch again, but look under our clients. So if we look under clients and guests, we could see right off the bat from looking at the switch, what is connected here. And you can see that I have five clients connected. This won't show any of our Unify access points, but I have a side of house, which is a camera, I have my pie hole, I have a NAS, and then I have a camera in my garage. So I really like that we could see the view right from the switch interface of who's connected. Now let's take a look at one of our clients that are using Wi-Fi. So we could see I have this Apple iPhone and the connection type is on five gigahertz Wi-Fi six. If I click on the client, we could see a few new things here. So we have our Wi-Fi standard, which is Wi-Fi six, and then we have the multi-in, multi-out configuration. And on this iPhone, 
it's using two by two. Another thing that's new from the client configuration list is the ability to forget the client. We could always do reconnect and block, but we've never been able to forget. So this will unlock the DHCP address. So if we go back to display options, we could show offline devices. Now we can see all these devices are offline. I could click on Apple iPhone 11 and then I could forget it. And in the new update, they've improved the traffic overview page. We could see below that we have this graph and it's showing us our download and our upload. And it will show us this graph of the throughput. We could also just select download or upload. We have this identified traffic and you could see different colors. If you hover over it, it's going to show you what is being used. So the most traffic in my network at 29.8% is Netflix. And then if we keep going down, we have Twitch and then we have YouTube. We could click on Netflix and then we could see which clients are using it and what are pulling down the most traffic. And this is really useful as someone is using all your bandwidth, you could locate who it is and then you could block that client. Another new feature within 7.1.61 is this global AP settings. So we could set the channel width for the 2.4, the 5 gigahertz and the 6 gigahertz and that would go over to all of our APs instead of going in and manually doing it. We could also set the transmit power for each one of those bands, and then we could have an AP exclusion list. We also have this nightly channel optimization. So it says channel optimization, clients connectivity by optimizing wireless channel utilization and reducing network interference. I have mine disabled, but you can recalibrate that if you'd like. Now something still missing in this update that lots of people have been asking for is load balancing. So if we had two different WANs, we could load balance between them. It is showing up under internet and then load balancing, but you can't select it. We could only do failover only. So hopefully in the next update, they do push that out. And next we could do traffic management. So we have our traffic management rules. I'm going to create a new rule and this schedule is new. It still says coming soon, but it is available right now. So I'll create a new rule. We're going to block and the category is going to be an app. I'll say that it's Facebook and then I'm going to select my Apple iPhone. We could do this schedule so we could always block it. We could have it every day, every week, one time only, or we could do it custom. So we could make a custom schedule for this particular phone. And this would be great if you have kids and you want to block them from going to certain apps during the school hours. And then we have traffic routes, which is only available in the UDR in the general release. But with the UDR, we don't have two WAN interfaces anyway, so it doesn't make sense to create rules. What this is going to be is pretty much policy based routing. So we could have a category, either a domain name, IP address or the Internet. And then we could select a source so we could select a full network if we'd like. From there, if we had our IoT network selected, we could say for the whole IoT subnet to go through WAN 2. But with the UDR, we can't do that because we only have a WAN 1. So I will do another full video on traffic routes when it becomes available in the UDM Pros and the SE. Now, the last thing we'll look at is when we're at the dashboard of our UDM Pros, our UDRs or SEs, they've added the floor plan. So we could click on floor plan and it's going to add everything we have in our Unify network to it. This isn't my house, this floor plan, it's just a custom one, but you could upload your own. And then we could either hover over the device to see the Wi-Fi coverage, or we could select it down below. So we could look at our 2.4 or our 5 gigahertz. And we could also look at our camera coverage. This is how Unified Design Center works as well. But you can add walls in to give you a more realistic view. Now that was an overview of 7.1.61. Do I think it's perfect? No. Do they have to add some things? Of course. So we need to get load balancing added into the network controller. Another thing I'd like to be able to view is our DHCP leases. We can't do that currently how it is. But the new UI is getting better and I find myself using the classic mode less. The only thing I really use the classic mode for now is for firewall rules as I find it's easier and it doesn't bump you out into a new tab. If you have any questions about this video, leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.